Hello everyone, my name is Shelby and this is the series where I reveal what is inside these mystery pottery molds I found on Gumtree. Hello and welcome to Mold 62 and if you just recently watched Mold 61 you would have seen that the sneak peek was for this mold. Unfortunately I had my power go out during the firing of these so they will be revealed next week. Instead this week I'll be revealing what was meant to be Mold 63 and switching them around. Here we have another magnet mold. Now I'm not a big fan of these magnet molds because they're not such a mystery and I like the excitement and the wonder of what could be inside each of the molds and how they're going to look once they've been poured up. But regardless I wanted to get through these magnet molds because I think that they're quite sweet anyway and this one in particular I think a lot of people will like. I tried to get some satisfying shots of me uh, scraping off the back side to make them nice and flat for magnets and it just was not satisfying at all and then I flipped them over and they just fell out like that because what happens is the clay shrinks as it dries so they move away from the plaster's edge. Here is a look of the mold and you can see that it says to pour solid. It's a Donner's mold like all the other magnet molds we've done so far. And this one was made in 1984. So once they were out I used my rubber kidney to smooth off the rest of the flat surface so that it'll be nice and clean for sticking a magnet on post firing. And the plan with these magnets is to go in with a brown cow look and a black and white cow look. And then I'm going to add some color by doing their little cutesy cottage garden hats. And one of the cows is wearing glasses, but I'm going to do them a bit fresh and make them into sunglasses by doing the lens a black rather than a gray or a white. These ones are very similar to how I've done the previous magnets. I'm doing that watercolor wash because I find that it works and I don't have to spend really finicky time trying to get all my color into the small details very precisely and the watercolor adds a sort of muddiness that adds a bit of texture to these pieces and then I'm going to do a wash. The wash is an antiquing wash once I've bisque fired these so the way it works is that I paint this underglaze on first, I put them in the bisque kiln and then that sort of bakes the color in place and then I add more underglaze on top all over the piece and then wash it away with the sponge. And because that underglaze underneath where I'm painting now has baked on, it doesn't wash away when I sponge it, only the next layer. And that will stay in the crevices so it gives it a bit more definition of all these little details that are on these magnets without having to finically fine line them all in myself. The wash I'm going to do over these is a warm golden brown and that should be really subtle in the little crevices so that it doesn't take away from the pastely colors that I've already spent time doing and it should just give it a little bit of definition in those spots like in the fabric material of those hats it allows it to sort of stand for itself and not a flat design. I must say that I don't really like doing these magnets just because of that mystery element but with all things aside if this wasn't a series about re revealing what is inside each mold I think that these ones are really quite dainty sweet and cute I love that one of the cows has little glasses on like a little grandma cow or even just like a fresh funky cottage cow and I love the detail of them wearing hats I think that, that was a nice little touch like they could have just been playing cows but it just adds a little extra sort of character development to these pieces on another note I noticed that two of the cows are practically the same design just flipped around you can see that orange and that blue hat they look like they're pretty much flipped and it would have been nice just to see a different angle of the cow um, maybe like a front onwards or uh, le like a laying down cow would have been so sweet in the grass with like a daisy next to it and I feel like that would have made this set a little bit more finessed for me personally just because I feel like it's not as creative to just sort of flip the cow around and I also noticed that I don't really like the mouse the eyes are a bit odd as well um, so it would have been nice to have a little bit more freedom to sort of paint my own style eyes and my own style mouth on these ones just because I didn't really feel like it fit my style of painting character faces but nonetheless here they are post firing no kiln shot this week because I was able to sort of squeeze these in in little gaps in the kiln throughout the week. 
I do really like how the glazed ones always look because I just think that they give them such a crispness that I love. With that said, the cow with the blue hat with the black and white, it has such a dreamy look to it without the gloss that I really actually fell in love with the underglazed one on this particular piece. With the cow with the hat, unfortunately we had a little... Uh predicament where I accidentally dropped one of the pieces of the bench as I was filming this so I glued it back together and you might be wondering why it says 21 that's because I painted these in 21 I didn't get them through the kiln until the new year so I always date my work whenever I finish painting it but here is the finished pieces. I'd love to know your thoughts and feelings on these pieces. So let me know in the comments and here's your sneak peek again <laughs> for the same mold that I was meant to do this week, next week. <laughs>